Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Late Night Craft Talk. Let's get that countdown timer going. And 10 minutes and counting until tonight's show starts. Yes, folks, we are live, live, live tonight. Uh, and there goes all the notifications. Every week. <laughs> I just don't put my phone on silent purposely anymore for that. So, folks, Sabay is not here tonight. We are joined again by our special co-host, one of our favoriteest favorite people ever. Hello, C say hello, Kaylee Joe. Hello, Kaylee Joe. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. Hello. Hello. You could have said hello, Kaylee Joe. Hello, Kaylee Joe. We should try to do the whole the next nine and a half minutes in the third person. How long do you think you'd last? Two minutes. No, not even that long. Fifteen seconds. Maybe. Should we try? Or nah, we'll I, I, I don't even know how, but go ahead. Okay. Well, James thinks you can do it. <laughs> yeah, no, I can't. <laughs> oh, come on. Don't make me go. In the, I'm going to go ahead and try to break the third wall a few times tonight then. Like the, uh, uh, Deadpool does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you've seen Deadpool, no. right? No. All right. Kelly Joe, our next I'm river trip. I am downloading this movie called Deadpool. Uh huh. And you are going to watch this. <laughs> And then you'll wonder, why have I not seen or known of this wonderful thing I go to uh, yet? All right, folks, we got a couple people watching so far. Sharing is caring. I'm going to show, I'm going to start sharing the show right now. Let's see. Go to my page. I'm doing this. Isn't that with Ryan Reynolds? Deadpool. Yes. Let's see, now I remembered that part. Well, it gives you some, <laughs> it gives you hope right there. I actually had a kid. I'm at a scout meeting in Joshua Tree last Wednesday. Folks, I go up there for scout meetings about first Wednesday every month, and we meet at the VFW and Joshua Tree and talk more of the scouts. And he goes, who's Chuck Norris? And oh. we all turned and looked at him. Oh. And we're going, Lord, yeah. we are going to onslaught you with Chuck Norris jokes. First thing I said was, okay, for one, Chuck Norris doesn't do push-ups. He pushes down the earth. <laughs> and it just went from there. It's sad when you bring up things from the past like that and younger generation looks at you like, huh? No kidding. Hey, Jen's on. Hello, Jen. No, Jen, I'm not wearing the stilettos tonight. <laughs> that comes from a Facebook conversation and post this morning. Oh. Do it. I don't no. know what you're talking about there. Do it. Um, no, no lipstick either, I hope. Not this time. <laughs> so they made me promise. Oh, good. But she doesn't know tonight, so uh, I can be. Uh, <laughs> I can be it. All right. Okay, and let me get back to the comments. So Jen's there. Jen's probably talking about doing the third person. If I talked in the third person, Kelly Joe, you probably like. I I can't do this. I don't think I. You're can. weird. I <laughs> just. I mean, Kelly doesn't think that it can happen. I just. Don't. <gasps> you did it! You did it! You did it! You did it! Okay, continue. <laughs> James thinks was, Kelly Joe can. That was a tiny snippet. I don't know if I could ever do it again. You got to give it the old college try. I didn't go to college for very long. <laughs> Just long I, enough. But I'm back in. All right. Just folks, I got to get back to sharing. I got to get. I got to finish this. I can't apparently walk and chew bubble gum tonight. Okay. There's the live, and I'm going to go over here to share. And I'm going to say share, more options, share to feed, and then type in, let's see, we are live for tonight's episode. Folks, if you share tonight, you share the show, Sabea just might buy you a pony. <laughs> I don't know it yet, and I'm keeping, I'm making promises she, she's going to have to try hard to keep. <laughs> oh, we're gonna try. Surveil. We all want a pony. Oh, Jen says, I bet he's just gonna wipe the lipstick off before he goes on camera. <laughs> okay, you know what? I had some left over from a show a few months ago. I don't know if it was dry or not, but I don't even know where it is. But you know, if I can seriously, if I can find it, and I may just run over and try that, but I don't want to leave you holding the holding the audience solo there, Kelly Joe. I would do it just for Jen. I have no lipstick. I, I have nothing to come back with on that. Now, oh, we hello from Kokomo, Indiana. We have Vivian watching. I have to finish hey, typing up the share thing. We are live for tonight's episode of Late Night Craft 
talk and an exclamation point and share. Oorah, I did it. Oorah. Four minutes and 55 seconds of the show starts, folks. 52, 51, 50. 51. Now, last week we were supposed to do G.I. Joe versus Barbie. Savannah and I have moved that to next week. Tonight was actually supposed to be about the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show. Uh, Savannah has been on doing a live every day, and that is a lot of work, prep work. And, you know, she's been doing 35, 40 minute lives from Tucson. That's a lot. She is really tired. We're actually going to pre record the show Wednesday to talk about the Gem and Mineral Show, but she's just like, I just, it, it's too late. It's too much. She said, you know, can you take the show Friday? I went, yep, yeah, we'll just move the subject over. We were actually going to do this show subject in about two weeks we moved it to tonight which is being what do i call it healthy living healthy know living health. part part two know know what to do part health with your hip, something like that it was part two of know your health know your health and it says jen says at least it's a nice shade that's I feel what like I a said. light pink or coral would be your color james you know what i'm writing this down jen for you next week I'm going to put the lipstick on live. This will probably be about as fun. No, wait. I have done it live, haven't I? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did. Yeah, it's it's something I'll never get out of my... I'll never <laughs> unsee that. Hey, I did a whole lot better than I did putting on the face mask during the self-care episode like a year or two ago. I think I even did like a screenshot or something. <laughs> Got it. All right. Uh, I'm going to try Coral for you, Jen. Just to show I'm a man. Yeah, <laughs> cowboy hat. Well, and Boots. Coral's tough, you know, Coral. Yeah. Strong. You tough. better. I'm going to hold you to it. Send Thread. me a couple reminders. Matter of fact, uh, let me let me do this. I'm grabbing my phone right now. We've got three minutes to go. And I'm going to say, <clears throat> let's see. I'm set the reminder for Wednesday. Purple stilettos from Vivian. Purple Vivian, stilettos. order them in a size 12, and I'll give you my address if you want to buy them. I'm a poor college student right now. All right, hold on. Set a reminder for this Wednesday to buy coral colored lipstick to wear on the show for Jen. <laughs> Got it. Buy coral color lipstick to wear on the show for Jen. Did you hear that from Google? Yeah. I heard so it. 8 a.m. Okay. Save. It. I'll remind you on Wednesday at 8 a.m. All right. So that's when I got to go out to the local beauty supply store, probably crack all the mirrors when I walk in and go, I need coral lipstick because <laughs> I want to look pretty. Uh huh. All right. Make it too. According to Jen, nothing tougher than a man wearing a pair of stilettos and a good shade of lipstick, <laughs> especially in Vegas. Okay. All right. No. Is that yeah. It? Especially in Vegas. Oh, we got a lot of people watching. All right, so we got that. Uh, we're just about a minute and a half from countdown, folks. Tonight is Know Your Health. We are going to be, uh, we were going to show how to take vitals, just basic vitals. We'll probably touch in that, but we're going to be talking about uh, LDL cholesterol as well as uh, blood glucose, which is diabetes, and the blood pressure cuff. And remember, if you saw the promo from this morning, we're going to have a contest to see what you can identify. Can, can you identify and pronounce a sphygmomanometer? That is a real word. A monitor. A big monitor. One minute to count down, Kelly Joe. You ready? Sure. All right. Just remember, folks, stigma monometer. And that is actually the pronounce the uh, Stig- correct pronunciation. Stigma monometer. It's like the Muppet Show. Stigma monometer. Did I get it? What? Stigma monometer. I had it a second ago. All I think is when I do that is like singing penguins from the Muppet Show. Mm-hmm. I got to do a whole. We got to do a whole show just on the Muppet Show. We got. Well, we did. We did a show that had Muppets on. We had to make our own Muppets. That was from our first summer. I am now eating pizza from Vivian. Cool. Ready, K Joe? Ready? We ready for a countdown? Sure. Okay. When do you and start? We'll, and we got 12, 12, 10 seconds of the countdown. What else are we going to talk about to finish the subject? Jeez, 10 seconds. I don't know. Hello, Maybe. Maya's here. Yes. Okay, Maya, you don't get the stare. Ready for countdown? And 10. 10 9, 8, eight 7, 6, 
Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Zero. Showtime. It's time for Late Night Craft Talk. With hosts Avea Kamori Yang and James Hermes. Let's get the fun started. It's time to start the show. I got to work on the volume on that, folks. We've been going with our generic opening because uh, busy with school and business, and it takes a little while each week to do the uh, customized opening credits, and it's only going to get busier as time goes on. We'll be talking about that in a few minutes. Otherwise, this week, welcome back to the show, Kelly Joe. and I'm a poet, don't even know it. Thank you for the invite. I'm awesome. always happy, always happy to, to join every now and then. Just, Absolutely. Just, I just know that sometimes you're like, you're used to watching the show, not being I on the know, show. Are you getting a little better up. with that now? Just wake me up with it. We'll see. <laughs> so I thought, Hello. <laughs> I know. Hopefully you got enough sleep for tonight. Sometimes we do the show. So it's going. <laughs> and yeah. Like, sometimes I, I fall asleep in the last part. It's like, oh, wait, uh, oh yeah, we're still okay. <laughs> so hopefully I'll just, not. I'll attribute that to Savea, not me. <laughs> okay, continue action on that one. All right. What are you drinking? I am drinking a tea of my own harvest concoction of rose hips, rose stinging hip? nettle, rose hips, stinging nettle, and elderberry powder. And that's a tea? Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. It's Folks, there's a reason Kelly Joe's on tonight because of our subject. She's going to be giving, I'm going to go over the technical medical information. She's going to be giving the holistic <laughs> approach to, for prevention. As well as minim minimizing some of it, <laughs> some of it. We've only what got an hour to cover this, but we're gonna, we still got to make it fun. So we got a few announcements. Let me get it up. We have an announcement from Dancing Bear Indian Trader, and Savea sent it to me earlier. Where are you? I got the messenger. Where are you? There it is. Okay. For a quick message. Okay, big announcement is we have twenty five percent off the new Tucson items on our website. And the sale is extending through to Saturday, Saturday 11th, so tomorrow. Remember, Savea has been offering 25% off what they've been showing and buying from the uh, Tucson Gem and Mineral Show. And uh, it's listed on the website. She's been working hard doing putting stuff on the website while they're still in Tucson. So a lot she's of work. Actually, she'll be driving back about today. She's probably back home by now, but it's a long drive. But... Again, 25% off sale is continued through tomorrow at Dancing Bear Indian Trader's website. Any new news from uh, Elk Rack? We're just waiting for Powell Rodeo season to start in March or April. Otherwise, we're at Palm Springs Village Fest once a week. And is there any announcements from Kelly Joe? Huge Enterprises. Nope, nope, nope. nothing okay. lately. We do I have one nice, thing, unfortunately. What? I made a nice resin serving board for my daughter for her for Christmas. That's Can the last thing I, we're presenting? I don't have it. No, no, it was turned out really nice. Yeah, gotcha. I almost almost sold it a couple times before she actually knew it was coming. <laughs> don't say that on the internet live. No, I wouldn't have done uh, that. All right. One more announcement is that uh we're hoping to also get on tonight, Christy Nieto. Um, she is not able to come on tonight because she's actually got a photo shoot. Remember, this is Christy's living over in Tennessee now. And she's Eastern time zone. Ooh. <laughs> Christy is uh, is opening a business. Uh, accounting services called Alternate Office Solutions. And her Facebook page is up. Uh, if we get a couple minutes, I'm going to try to throw in the link on the discussion with this. But uh, look, at, look for a page. Like it. Uh, she's kind of going back to school, getting some of her old certifications done for uh, office keeping, as well as coming up with some new... Uh, business strategies for people wanting to establish online businesses. She's working hard on this. We, she and I talk quite a lot, quite a bit. So watch out for that. Um, she's still putting together the website. She's doing it all herself. It is a lot of work, but she's doing it. And that is awesome stuff. Cool. So folks, look for that. Google it, you know, or look for her on Facebook, give a like, follow her. She's a hard worker and she is, uh, her work ethic's pretty darn good. Even though she's the only person who's ever dropped the F bomb on our show. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why we love Christy. We love it when she takes us off the rails, hugely. It happens. Oh, it's entertaining. All right. With that, we got a few comments right this. Um, first of all, we have a comment from Maya from Vivian. It says, hi, Maya. 
Maya says, honey, 25% off. Yes, that is huge. And isn't it till the 11th on the Saturday? Yes. Okay. Thank you for calling me that on, Jen. Yes, the sale is extended another week. Apparently, I time traveled again in my brain. <laughs> again. I just did not... Yes. So the sale is for one more week. Thank you, Jen, for pointing that out. Again. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for doing that. Um, take that hot hat off, James. Okay. Vivian uh, says, I see I your head she, Maya says she wishes she has photos, but Vivian's saying, take that hat off, James. James likes the hat. James will wear the hat, but let's go and address that. Yes, folks. Uh, I had to cut my hair. I am a college student now. Classes officially for me started up last Monday. I am taking what's called EMR, emergency medical responder. And then that's a quarter long class. And that is a prelude to EMT, emergency medical technician. And we got another kind of thing. Now you got to wear the stilettos. Vivian, send me the, some, one of y'all send me the stilettos in size 12. I'll give it a try unless I can find something good. Well, cause I ain't spending that money. How tall but, uh, would you be in stilettos? Huh? How tall would you be with an added, what, four inches? Four inches? About six, six, <laughs> six, seven. I'm six, two now, or just, yeah, about six, two. All right. No, why, James? Okay. I'm going to address that. Uh, the class I'm taking is I'm taking EMT by the, by Memorial Day weekend into May. I will be uh, what's called a nationally a NRMT, National Registered EMT. I could be EMT work, work in ambulance or whatnot, or emergency care uh, anywhere in the country after that. It's an intense class. Uh, it just started Monday. And, I mean, the textbooks I have to have, I have to go through is stuff like the Cyclopedic Dic uh, Medical Dictionary. That's only about 2,500 pages. Wow. And then I'm there's kidding. the actual EMR book. I keep these in special binders. I bought these used. There's that. The EMT one for that's a quarter long is about that thick. This one's quick, but it's mostly the uh, labs and stuff. And then there's the, let's see here. Atlas of Human Body. I love the illustrations in this book. I'm not showing them on because people will, you will get queasy. And then there's... Uh, Basic life support, BLS, basically CPR. And then there's all these cheat codes, medical abbreviations and acronyms. Memorize the entire human skeleton and anatomy terminology. These aren't specific EMT. They help out, but it's for biology classes and other stuff I've got to do in the future. And all these stuff from the codes, I have to one year to memorize these. Wow. It's so a lot. Gonna, and there's the clinicals. You're, you're huh? going to be a smarty pants then, are you? I'm going to be met. I'm going to be all smarty smart about medicine. -y medicine. <laughs> that's the way I'm terming it. Cause that's You'll the way be I'm a smart, smarty pants. Yeah. But one of the thing is, is that I'm not going with the class. I'm not going in with, Oh, let me get that off right there. Uh, let me get Vivian's comment down. I got to hide that. I also have to get the banner up. Let me do that. While I'm doing this example banners, come on. Beach shop, use banners to summarize. Uh, where's the banners? Use banners. Um, I'm folks, just here to summarize banners on this for the show. Beach shop hop show. Yeah, um, it's just giving me stuff on new things. I'm just so, here to smile and nod. What's that? I'm just here to smile and nod. Okay. I'm like, where's the banners for the show on the oh here it is. Branding. Okay. Wait, we're gonna have it. We're gonna have it, folks. There's our banner. There, yay. And I have to get over to this side because that's what Savannah does to me every week. Okay. To get back to it, is one of the regulations is the, the emphasis classes is the assumption that the person going through will be working in an ambulance. Riverside County, California, as well as many other counties nationwide, require that their emergency personnel have short hair so as to minimize any containment like body fluids, like, say, blood, vomit, that could be carrying an infectious uh, disease or something else to spread. So it's not for your own safety. So they require in the class under that assumption that you have to have uh, cut your hair. I have not cut my hair since 1990. 
Native, they have the long hair. I got it cut Monday. I got it buzzed uh, last Monday. Or it should be last Sunday. I was not happy about it. I'm still not happy about it. But this is a class requirement. And sometimes this is just one of those sacrifices I have to make for the school for what I want to pursue. But folks, when the class is over, and believe me, I've talked to the instructor where he understands, but there's a lot of rules they have to follow that's beyond their control. Uh, the instructor very much understands. We had a great conversation about it after our first class on Monday. Um, but when the class is over at the end of May, I'm going full 1980s Bon Jovi bad medicine. <laughs> pun intended. So with that, you want to know what I look like, folks? Here it is. That's me with the short haircut. The reveal. The reveal. There it is. Right now I got that's, hat here and I took a shower before the show, so it's going to be anyways. That's as much not as it bad. Is. I hate it. That's but, not uh, bad. What? It's not bad. Uh, I'm not used to feeling cold air on the back of my neck or <laughs> the tops of my ears. I hate it that's like hell. It is growing out as soon as I get a chance. As soon as the class is over, it's going long, and I am not paying that. The only time I have to pay that, I have to cut it for anything, was this. Any other classes after this is all going to be in hospital, uh, where you don't have that requirement as if you're going to be riding in an ambulance. Well, at least it's not, like like you said, buzzed. I thought it would be shaved all the way down. I considered it, but this was enough. Yeah. That's enough. <laughs> it gives me a little bit more head start to grow that stuff back. But you know, here. There we go. It's enough to start with. The moose and stuff like that is still had here, but there I did it. Okay. <laughs> uh, thank you, Jen. Still handsome. Did you keep the ponytail? No, my, I cannot. It is short. Here we go. Short shaved in the back. I hate it. Still looks good. I feel like I'm bald. Anyway. <laughs> uh, one way of things we have from Jen says, not sure I agree with you taking the hat off, though. It might be upset me again. <laughs> Yes. Um, I understand. Jen and I very much are agreed on this, but it's a sacrifice I'm going to make. And the thing is, is within cultural context, I did have a relative that a close relative that passed away last week, uh, going to Memorial next week. So I was going to cut it anyways. I don't want to put that information, but I think a lot of people are asking and, and deeply care. And believe me, it is. I feel, feel the love folks. Y'all awesome. Uh, I feel a care that it would be happening anyways. It'll grow back. It'll grow back, but I would be in mourning on that one as it is just for the uh, cousin that passed away, which we'll be mentioning next week. Okay. With that, um, Wendy says, I've never seen the back of your neck. I haven't either for a long time, <laughs> but we showed it. Okay. On tonight, we had a little, let's see. Ooh, we're in a little late. Um, Folks, if you've been watching the news, and Kelly Joe and I were talking about this earlier when we were talking about the show and how we're setting up tonight, there has been a little bit of a problem. If you saw the news this morning, China sent a giant spy balloon that has been spotted over the Northwest, particularly this lately over Montana. And this thing's been hovering over areas, sensitive air, military areas, hovering there and then moving on. So there's some control. And I think this thing's been around the U.S. longer than we think. It's just finally being not realized, but finally announced. People are seeing this and recognizing that this Chinese spy balloon has been around a while. It's a little and, familiar. Yeah. Matter of fact, I texted Zabe about it. We looked at some of our old photos and recent photos, and uh, it's around. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and show it right quick. That's There's a spy balloon. We were looking at and that is the outside looking at Dancing Bear Indian Trader's store in Escondido. There's a spy balloon. It's right there. It's right there. It's obvious. How can we I never saw that in previous pictures? Matter of fact, uh, there's my booth up in Yucca Valley during the pandemic, 2020. We had to, <laughs> it was the only place we could sell. And, and I was looking is. at photos. I'm looking back and went, there it is. There's the Chinese spy balloon. There it is. Right there in the upper, for you folks watching the upper right. And we looked around at other photos and we found more. That's the inside of Dancing Bear store. There's wow. The Chinese spy and there it is. There it is. Just, I mean, how can we cannot notice this thing hanging in the room? It's a giant spy uh, balloon. Because it's a spy balloon. I know. There's me working on an arrow with the Dremel. It's, yeah, you don't even notice it. Yeah, this is me a few days ago. And there, I never noticed the spy balloons underneath the tree by the house. Like, between me and the 
just looks like a regular balloon. You know, spine. I never noticed a balloon hanging around. Yeah. But, you know, Joe, even you have had these experiences. Look at I, that. It's right there. I know. Didn't even notice it that day either. I know. That's used fairly recently on Lake Paris with your purple kayak. Mm -hmm. And there it is. There and it is. And matter of fact, we're getting some comments. I'll have to address these. But matter See, of fact, I was looking the other way. Just a few I'm days ago with the dog. Way again. I'm not looking in the right direction. No, it's just, it's sneaking up. It's just following you around. It's like, if you went like this, that balloon would go. And just like, or, or just like, be like this, looking around. I'm going to be looking happened, around more often. You know, th this is a picture from 20, I believe 2021 that's coming up next. There's you and I at 4S next to Colorado River. And, and in the background, there is that Chinese spy balloon. There it is. We weren't looking. We were looking at the camera. Well, again, it's going to be one of those things where it's like, you hear it going, that sounds like a Chinese spy balloon. You look behind you and it goes, all of a sudden it's going to go like, da -da 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 -da. and it's just going to be minding its own business and we won't notice it. <laughs> These things happen. That's because it's a spy balloon. You're not yeah. supposed to see it. Well, Vivian, I like your suggestion of pop it. Pop it. I mean, that's the uh, balloon. I think somebody suggested that earlier this morning, too. Probably. <laughs> Probably. But, you know, this thing's just hovering around. If it's this well camouflaged that we got to go back to these photos to find it in the past, this thing's all over the place. It's you know, everywhere. A comment from Wendy. That's why I wear shades, a hat, and a mask when I go outside. Well, you know what? Because of this, I brought, I, I put together this. My <laughs> aluminum foil cowboy hat. Aluminum foil cowboy hat. <laughs> the foil cowboy hat. Matter of fact, this was Burl Tushkinig, friend of the show, suggestion today. And I did this. But I could have done a regular, like, crazy tinfoil cap, but I did it over a cowboy hat, so one, I wouldn't look like I'm crazy or paranoid. And that spy balloon will not get any information out of that head. Mm -mm. This is like Magneto's helmet where Dr. Xavier cannot read his mind. No. Nope. Can't get through. There it is. Yep. Blue and a foil cowboy hat. <laughs> We're safe. <laughs> and Vivian uh, says yes. And then Wendy Hodge also comments exactly. It wouldn't have been a good day, good spy balloon if y'all had seen it before. Wendy's Mark, she knows these things. It's true. It's true. She plays D and D a lot. Look at how many times we didn't see it. I know. Yeah. Photographic evidence, folks. Photographic evidence. With that, uh, that is our subject tonight. So about the spy balloon. Might smart. We might sneak <laughs> up a few more times. We're gonna have to check it, but let's get on tonight's show subject. So tonight we are doing know your health. Part two. Oh, wait. I should have probably addressed last week. Okay. Last week, we didn't show... Shabay came on and said James kind of had some problems. Um, we know I have the sensory overload. And last Friday, I was uh, loading some kayaks in my storage unit with a friend of mine. The lock broke in on the storage unit. It was a keyed lock. The key was broken in there. So we went out and got a grinding wheel or rotary saw, whatever those things are. What's it called? A Dremel. It's like a big, big, giant Dremel. A big, big, giant Dremel. Big, big saw saw thing that you used to cut cool. the hand grinder or something. Huh? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so I went out, bought one, and we're about to go. And I'm about to put in my earplugs. Remember, loud noises beat the snot out of me. And he started grinding on this lock before I get my earplugs in. And I was kind of I had to hold it down for him quickly. And he starts going. <laughs> the noise was off the charts, and. He had to grind for over two minutes, and I'm standing only a couple feet from this thing with it going, and I'm going, dude. And when it got done, I felt physically ill from it. That was a way scroll saw. A saws all. Angle grinder. I'm looking at what people are saying right here. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm guessing. It was an angle grinder. So thank you. So I'm going, and I was physically ill from it to the point that I was about ready to throw up and i was just so physically exhausted from the noise right there that's how you all know how that's how it affects me and i called survey about 7 30 i said i can't do this tonight i am i'm about to throw up i'm exhausted i've got to teach a kayak class the kayak class the next day and luckily all i like to do is bring up the kayaks i had somebody else teaching it i just had to bring them up and assist with the class a little bit and I was just, you know, that's what no loud noises do to me. That's why I can't work in an ambulance. 
after the EMT class is over. I can't. I'm gonna have to work ED and uh, some other medicines and some you know clinical session, you know clinics to work take vitals. There's no way I can do an ambulance. That would kill me. So that's why we didn't have the show last Friday. Um, it happens sometimes, and that just it beat beat me down. So that's why we didn't have it. We're back live this week, obviously, and uh, we'll be live again next week with hopefully GI Joe versus Barbie. All right, folks. Now on to tonight's subject, and this is going to be one of those super informational shows that's also going to be super entertaining. And yes, I will be pricking my finger and doing a blood sample in a, just a short bit. So with that, tonight's show is Know Your Health Part Two. I'll be talking about some of the medical information. Kelly Joe will be talking about some of the holistic part and diet. And uh, as well as at the end of the show, we're going to identify with and see if y'all can say the word stigmometer. <laughs> all right, Kelly Joe, you ready? First of all, we're information we're going to have that we're presenting tonight. Let me get this back over here to us. The information we're presenting tonight is for informational and entertainment values. If you feel ill or have an injury, please contact your primary care provider or visit the emergency room of your local hospital or uh, urgent care. Remember, this is for informational and entertainment purposes. That's the legal we have to, we have to put out there, especially with this. So now that we got the legal done, we can actually go back to the topic. Know your health part two. The information we're actually presenting tonight has been reviewed by our quack panel of doctors. <laughs> Let me get it up. Our quack panel of doctors, Dr. Quackers and Dr. Jar Jar Pickles. That we'll just call Dr. Pickles. So they've been reviewing our information. And we're going to occasionally check in with them to make sure that we're accurate with our quack team of Dr. Quackers and Dr. Pickles. Quacker so fact tonight, Oh, look what we have right here. So first thing we're going to cover tonight is cholesterol. So we're going to do a quick overview. We're going to make it fun, folks, but we got to put it in context. Not everybody, we got a lot of viewers and not everybody knows about this. So don't go grass growing. Stick with us on this one. So first one, we're going to talk about LDL, the cholesterol. So with that, Let's quickly review this. <clears throat> this took a long time putting together this PowerPoint today. Cholesterol is the waxy... Why is somebody messaging me all of a sudden? Okay. Cholesterol is a waxy substance found in your blood. Your body needs... It's not like, you know, candle wax. No. No. Your body needs cholesterol to build healthy cells, but high levels of cholesterol can increase your risk of heart disease. With high cholesterol, you can develop fatty deposits in your blood vessels, Eventually, these deposits grow, making it difficult for enough blood to flow through your arteries, your blood. Sometimes those deposits can break suddenly and form a clot that causes a heart attack or stroke. So, yeah, basically, um, these clots can form in a part of the body, leg, whatnot, uh, where it gets too thick, can go up to the heart, cause a heart attack, or go up to the brain and cause a stroke. High, symptoms of high cholesterol. High cholesterol has no symptoms. A blood test is the only way to detect if you have it, although there are some indirect methods to, to uh, find it. According to the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, the NHLBI, that's really long, a person's first cholesterol screening should occur between the ages of 9 and 11 and then be repeated every five years after that. Then we get old. <laughs> Nine NHLBI. And 11 recommends that cholesterol screenings occur to everyone from one to two years between for men ages 45 to 65 and for women 55 to 65. That just tells you women's, women are smarter and live smarter and healthier than men, apparently, by 10 years. It's all about stubbornness. Yeah, kidding. People over 65 should receive cholesterol tests annually. Uh, with that, subtle signs that you may have high cholesterol. Heart attack. That is the most blatantly obvious. By then, it's a little too late. High blood pressure. Blood pressure is a sign to look out for, too. Diabetes, chest pain or angina, stroke, or pain while walking. These are subtle signs that your cholesterol is too high. But honestly, when you have these signs, I wouldn't consider it subtle. I'd consider it too late. And damn, that's a neon sign. Yeah. 20 feet tall and 100 feet wide. It's like, hello, wake up call. Yep. Now, um... There's two types of cholesterol, LDL, the low-density lipo lipoprotein cholesterol, sometimes called the bad cholesterol. 
makes up most of your body's cholesterol. Then there's the HDL, the high-density lipoprotein, sometimes called the good cholesterol that absorbs cholesterol in the blood and carries it back to the liver. So um, that's the type right there. And then we go, well, we'll go back to that slide. So um, there's a lot of arguments over what levels uh, cholesterol should be, whether it's, you know, LDL, which is primarily what doctors look at, a combination of LDL, the you know, as well as um, lipoproteins or triglycerides, triglycerides. But let's just look at LDL right now. Uh, there's some argument of what constitutes high, what doesn't. Most, most of our viewers are Native American and know that the cholesterol as well as high blood pressure tends to go higher than the general population. That said, you got to watch it. Like me, I don't have high cholesterol, never did, but I got to keep it under a certain level. Um, there are tests for it. Uh, we were hoping to get a test strip uh, donated tonight. Unfortunately, the doctor's office last minute was not able to provide that just because they ran out. It's not any kind of, uh, you know, any kind of aversion to uh, liability or anything like that. We we're they're happily able to donate because otherwise these things are like 50 bucks. But with, that, um, with cholesterol, let's go back to this, is that there are some tests you can get. Um, home, these are a couple of home test kits you can buy where it talks about e-lipids test. This is one where you do prick your finger and put it on a test meter and they read it. Um, these home tests should not be considered accurate, but the reading it gives should be considered ballpark. And this is specific to uh, the cholesterol testing kits for your uh, LDL. And it can read high. Some people, it's just naturally high for them. Some it's kind of low. But this is something we're checking out. And if the kits are about 50 bucks. You can go through your insurance. If you don't have an insurance, you don't trust them or doctors, go to a public health screening. But folks, check it. Um, this is important stuff. I know a lot of our viewers are very on the ball with their own health. But for those that don't, or you may have a family member that watches this show, guilt them. Do what you got to do. Have them check that stuff, even when they're younger. Because if they don't check it when they're younger... Uh, they may already have a problem that they can avoid and make their life a whole lot simpler in, in the future rather than paying the price. But uh, with that, what are a few foods you can do to kind of help lower your cholesterol? Or if you right. have high cholesterol foods, you can get rid of, you can eat the natural way. There's a there's several things, actually. Um, I was just watching before we came on tonight, um, dandelions actually helps you with your cholesterol and your high blood pressure. And um, what's that other thing? Statins? Um, huh? Statins? No, statins is the grapefruit. That's why okay. they tell you not to eat a grapefruit with statin because it it's not because it counter counteracts it. It's because it's this like the same. So you would be given like an overdose. So you God, could basically it would, it would make you hypotensive. You put them too. Yeah, too, and I forgot the name of sure. of the component in grapefruit that's the same as in the statins. But yeah, it's, it would make you overdose. You would be taking too much statin if you ate grapefruit with it. Oh boy, my so, my when I, my brief experience taking statins last uh, late July and uh, first half of August was not pretty. Side effects. Ugh. Oh boy, but you know um, that's where we look at the natural, like the grapefruit. I'm not a fan of grapefruit, so, but after this, learning this tonight, I'm yeah, gonna learn to like grapefruit. Little monk fruit on there, you know, sweeten it up. That's all good. A little honey or something. Did you say mustard? No, monk fruit. Okay. I'm going to try honey with that. I've never particularly tried for grapefruit, but like I said, I'm going to learn to like it. I learned to yeah. like granola. <laughs> so I just dropped a bunch on my lap. How about any teas, like green tea or anything? Sure. Um, well, like I was saying, dandelion. There's a lot of natural things. A stinging nettle, believe it or not, is pretty much good for everything in your body. So you're, it's a mother herb, and it, it can pretty much cleanse just about everything. The seeds to the stinging nettle are three times more uh, potent, and it's an eighth of a teaspoon would be your serving. And I just sprinkle that on whatever I'm eating, you know. And I call that scrubbing bubbles because the, the stinging nettle seeds actually go through and clean your organs, including your blood. So that's a good thing to have. Not everybody has it. <laughs> no, but sting it's also stinging nettle. Stinging nettle, and it stings you to get your attention. Hello, I'm here. I'm here to help. That's what it's there. 
It's little tiny hypodermic needles with histamine in them. And that's yeah. why you take the leaves and make tea and it's good for allergies as well. I'm going to try that. I know like Burl Tushkinik, who's been very much trained, uh, works on, has a lot of different remedies he used taught by his uh, family on uh, using stinging nettle for some surprising, uh, surprising uses. Yeah, like this stem. If you get stung by it, you take the stem, break it up, rub it on where you've stung. The cure is not far from the cause. Well, I'm sure it's got a lot more uses than, uh, say, another oh, stinging plant, like, say, poison soup. ivy. Stinging nettle soup's really, really tasty. I've done that. I've had that. I've made pesto out of it. Make I remember you making pesto with it one of our river trips. Yeah, probably. Probably you brought <laughs> some with you. It's all over the yard now. Gotcha. Uh, there's other foods you can do that with lower cholesterol. Other drinks like green tea regimen is help is well known Garlic's to help a lower uh, LDL. Garlic. Garlic does a good job on it. Nothing is as quite as effective as a pill of a statin. That is a highly personal and eh, choice. Um, is it a tea? It's a tea. Okay, my ask if it's a tea. You should be able to see comments, right? No, I can't see any. Okay, I'll go just read them. Maya's asking, uh, is it a tea? Yes, with the stinging oil, you can make a tea. Uh, there are online resources. And Kelly Joe, if you can remember one off the top of your head, you give us one. But remember, do a lot of your own research before you take the leap, folks. Rose Mountain Herbs, I believe. But right now, stinging nettle's growing everywhere. I, I harvest it and dry it and then crumble it up, put it in a bag, and I have it as tea throughout the year. Gotcha. And then we have people are messaging Dancing Bear over their special right now, and it's popping up on my screen. It's not about the show. <laughs> All right. I have PAH, and so this is a really good for me to hear. Very cool. And Maya <laughs> loves garlic. I love garlic, too. I love, 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 love garlic. Love garlic. Garlic's great. Oh, yeah. Keeps Best vampires away as garlic. well as people if they don't like non-garlicky people. Ooh, pickled garlic. I could eat like 13, 14, 15 of those. Uh, those are good. <laughs> You said pickled garlic? Pickled garlic. I love pickled garlic. Um, it's an OD thing. You OD you're making somebody garlic. nervous if one of these two doctors. Look at him. He's nervous now when you say you like it pickled. <laughs> well, reaching pickling's into his guts good or something. Too. Pickling's good. That's a good thing for your gut. So it's all good. Got it. Okay. Let's go and move on to the next one. Was We're going to talk about, we, we talked about the uh, cholesterol. Covered that. <clears throat> Strongly encourage folks, remember, free clinics, free healthcare clinics, free screenings. You can get this done on the spot. Remember, it's ballpark readings to check that cholesterol. If anything, do it, especially if the, the nurse is cute or the caregiver. All <laughs> right. With this, we're actually going to bring up another one that is very much a problem in the Native American community. Diabetes. We're going to briefly touch on that now. So with diabetes, let's do a quick overview of it. Um Diabetes is a chronic metabolic disease characterized by elevated levels of blood glucose, also as blood sugar, which leads over time to serious damage to the heart, blood vessels, eyes, kidneys, and nerves. This is probably one of those things that can affect the body and affect so many Americans and can lead to so many other problems with this. The exact cause of diabetes, most types of diabetes is unknown. Remember, this is the exact cause. There's a lot of it suspicion, suspected. In all Diet. cases, sugar builds up in the bloodstream. This is because the pancreas does not produce enough insulin. Both 1 and type 1 and type 2 diabetes may be caused by a combination of genetic or environmental factors. Diabetes is associated with an increased risk of heart disease, stroke, high blood pressure, and a narrowing of the blood vessels, also called atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis, I got that. Nerve damage, which is called neuropathy, which is nerve damage in the limbs. Um, with that, there's two types of diabetes. Type one is historically called insulin dependent diabetes. Your pancreas doesn't make enough insulin or makes very little insulin. Insulin helps blood sugar enter the cells in your body for use as energy. Without insulin, blood sugar can't get into the cells and builds up in the bloodstream. That's bad. Type two diabetes is an impairment of the, in the way the body regulates and uses sugar glucose as a fuel. This long-term chronic condition results in too much sugar circulating in the bloodstream. Eventually, high blood sugar levels can lead to disorders in the circulatory nervous and immune system. It throws everything off. It damages everything. 
Um, and there's sugar in so much of everything. Even with the bread, you eat bread. The minute you eat bread, the carbs turn right into sugar. So you're thinking you're eating something that's good. And um, you're just putting more sugar in your system. You're putting it in in ways you don't even know. You know. Yeah, and the thing is, is the highly processed sugar these days is not any any ultra processed food. You know, especially with something laid, you know, ultra processed sugar laid with sugar. Mm -hmm. uh, the body is not designed to handle that. It cannot process no, it. Corn syrups and about everything. Corn is about everything. That's sugar. Even if you think about it, oranges are sugar, apples are sugar, bananas are sugar. So there's even some fruits that if you're a diabetic or a borderline diabetic, you would probably want to lay off of certain things. Berries are good. Blackberries, yeah. blueberries are are great antioxidants and such. Oh, they are. Um, the thing is, is, you know, some communities, there are lower income communities, uh, some reservations don't have access to those fresh foods. Uh, there's been places I've been on many reservations that uh, are uh -huh. located in very rural areas or outback areas that the closest thing, the only place they got to shop is the Dollar General. Cinnamon. Or store or a, just a cheap. You got the, cinnamon. You know, you know, HUD, you know, uh, FDA low end, here's the basic stuff that qualifies as food to buy. And so they don't have access to that healthier food. And then again, you know, it ain't cheap to eat healthy either. No. Well, cinnamon's easy. Everybody pretty much has cinnamon and it's a, a blood sugar leveler. It helps level your blood sugar. And, you know, I make jellies. I don't make like peaches and plum jellies. I make jellies that have certain reasons for them. And they're not sweetened with sugar. They're sweetened with monk fruit. But the, the jelly that I make for diabetics type of thing and for lowering your blood sugar is made out of cinnamon and honey mesquite. Honey mesquite's not honey. It's one of the mesquite trees or one of the families of mesquite. It comes out in a cute little pod, like little peas. They're almost like pearls. And I break those up. They're very sweet, actually. But that's uh, one of the things that help uh, level your blood sugar. So I add cinnamon to that. And, and that's what I, I give to people for, you know, for their muffins. <laughs> yeah, Hopefully I forgot not. to hide Maya's comment down there that's been up for a while. Um, getting so I into this. Um, yeah, there's a lot of ways you can do that, but once you have diabetes, you you can't get rid of it. You've got it. You can only minimize its effects and delay its its more uh some more serious uh, effects that it will have on you because it throws off everything. I mean, um, we've got a list of symptoms right here. Matter of fact, just a quick quick joke on here that's actually humorous because diabetes is so prevalent. In the Native American community, guess so. Uh, you know how two old Indian people say hi to each other? No. How's your sugar? How's your sugar? How's your sugar? <laughs> because it's so the way it is. I, uh, back in the 90s, uh, early 2000s, I had a friend that lost his leg. He's a full blooded Yaki. And I'd take him to powwows and we'd go visit and take him to the wheelchair because he lost his leg due to diabetes. He was out on the pow trail. He was out in a powwow and late nineties over in South Dakota and got an infection and ended up losing his, you know, he finally was able to get transported back to Southern California's home and he, the VA in Loma Linda and he got his leg amputated because wow. of it and wheeled him around, man. Cause he could get around cause he had an amazing mind, but just diabetes racked him. But uh, some of the signs of diabetes, if you're not familiar with that are symptoms of diabetes. And this is why you want to check if you have any symptoms, you want to check yourself. Uh, urinate, pee a lot. So especially often at night. Uh, that is one of the signs that if you have to do with that or a bad prostate. Um, are you very thirsty a lot? Do you have to drink a lot of water? Uh, have you lost weight without even trying? Are you hungry all the time? Blurry vision is another one because diabetes can cause cataracts and other vision problems. Does your vision just get blurry for no reason? Uh, have you have numb or tingling hands or feet, which is also known and part of a symptom of neuropathy? Do you feel very tired all the time because your body's working so hard to just can't get the energy it needs uh, from the sugar, you know, the glucose in the cells? Uh, do you have very dry skin? Do you have sores that heal slowly because it affects the body's immune system? And have you more infections than usual because the body's immune system has the energy to fight it? 
So those are things, if you have those symptoms or just generally these, definitely get yourself checked out for diabetes. It is, it affects one in 10 people in the United States. It is that prevalent to some form. And most people know, don't know they have it because they never get checked or their doctors just explain it away to something else that they don't want to mess with the patient. Yeah, we have idiots out there like that. And check your diet. Big part is you can do is diet. Is diet. diet. Uh, with that, there's uh, testing kits you can get. And we're actually, I'm going to lower my green screen and we're going to do the first of the tests. That I, well, you promised. I've been describing that tonight that there will be blood. Blood. So, oh, you'll get it. You big girl. You won't see it over. But um, so with that, uh, let's see. I've, I've had three cesareans. Yeah. So I, I'll okay. over it you used to work with elephants. Yeah, well, I, I, I know people who work with elephants. I was just around them, but I did work with lions, lions, mountain lions, a couple things. I've given 13 lions a bath before. Try that. That's fun. It was better than doing an <laughs> anal cavity search of an elephant, but still, yeah. I mean, if you work with lions, that's like cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, we have a couple long. questions right here we want to put out here. Very um, long time Vivian said that uh, she has just the opposite. She has low blood sugar. And Vivian, if you remember the technical term for that, uh, please let us know what that is. A uh, comment from Wendy. That's why I cook clean eating due to high fructose corn syrup and everything. And yeah, everything. Yeah, even, no processed food. Yeah, she even makes her own pasta and sauces and salad dressings. I've been to Wendy's house and I've tasted like her a balsamic vinaigrette. Oh my God, it's good. <laughs> Or a portobello mushroom burgers. Smoke. That's where she did it. It was like, ah. Love my it. my pasta, I get my pasta. My noodles are konjac, which also bring down your blood sugar. Um, right. It's good for your blood sugar. Mm -hmm. side. That said, what lowers blood sugar? Other other than not eating sugar, five five of those symptoms. Uh-oh. Yeah, Maya, we care. I want to check it out. But what else can lower your blood sugar naturally? Blood sugar, naturally. Um. Oh gosh! Well, dandelions again. <laughs> dandelions. That's another one. dandelions. I actually harvested some yesterday with my daughter-in-law, and we made uh, muffins with almond flour and a uh, handful of dandelion petals, and um, it's tasty. It's yeah. a good dessert. <laughs> and Vivian reminded me. Why couldn't I think this off the top of my head? Hypoglycemia. There you go. Yep, you've got hyperglycemia, hypoglycemia, and even diabetes. There's whole industries around that with testing strips and everything else. There's a, so much politics involved with it. It affects so much of the population, especially people that don't know they have it. Even pre-diabetes can be a problem. Yeah, I'm no longer borderline. Yeah, I'm borderline, but that's... I have my labs yesterday. I'm kind of borderline, but it tends to run... My family has a high tolerance for sugars. We tend to run higher than the doctors say... This is you were like, no, it isn't, because look at, we've got generations uh, and all the medical records show that we're, we got a higher tolerance. We're built a little, little, uh, little higher than most other people. It's Extra rough. sweet. Huh? Extra sweet. Extra sweet. Um, Wendy has a good <laughs> suggestion here. Ooh, I have to try cognac needles. Yes. Yeah, it I do zucchini with or spaghetti squash noodles. And they've been using the cognac. That's a mushroom. They've been using that for a long, long, long time. I mean, the Asians, the, that whole society with the noodles, that's just new to us. Yeah. Mushrooms have amazing. I mean, we could, we should probably do a show just on, on the health benefits of uh, mushrooms. Yes. I have five or six mushrooms I take every morning, just in capsules I make myself with the powder. Do you grow bigger or smaller, depending on which side you eat? Kelly <laughs> Miller in Wonderland. All right, let's go ahead and touch on the home test kits that we talked about. Uh, my mom's actually staying up because for, to do this to so help me with it. A1C blood test measures the amount of glucose in your blood over the past three months. This test is commonly used to diagnose pre-diabetes and diabetes. The average cost of an A1C test without insurance is eighty-five dollars and twenty cents for your blood to be tested in a lab. And there twenty cents. Home, what's that? Never mind. Is it at 20 cents? Yeah. Uh, so with that, there's actually, um, there's there's home tests you can get with a test strip, which we're going to do right now with a glucometer, glucosometer, whatever it's called. Glucometer. 
that can give you an idea. But again, this is ballpark, but there's also ones that diabetics have to check their, check their blood sugar regularly. Uh, my dad's one of those. And you can also use that for some testing. Uh, so with that, I'm going to pull down my green screen. I'm getting text messages. Lots let's of see some blood. Yeah. So let's see some blood. So folks, we're going to break out a test. And I'm going to take it right quick. All right. Like I said, I just had to have labs a few days ago. I got my results in today. I know where I'm at anyways. Um, so let me go ahead and pull down my green screen. And we're going to do this. So let, give me a second to set this up. Let's do this. Let's do this. See that? You know, that. The got the table right here with medical equipment. I got to bring up. I'm going to pull a chair back. Let's bring it up here. I got to move the mic. Is this why I'm supposed to give the stare, huh? Just stare at you. Can't hear you. You can't can't hear you. Can't hear you. Now you can hear me. Thank you. I actually hit the mute button on the mic. There you go. So I pulled over the, I've got everything here. Uh, we're going to do the test. I'm going to go grab my mom right quick so she can administer the test. We're going to describe what we're doing. And so while I do this, will take me a few seconds. Kelly Joe, you have the audience. Oh, my. Uh, but when he wants to see blood from the wow. comments I'm looking at right now. And so discuss with the audience the Industrial Revolution was neither a revolution, but was industrial. Discuss. In two seconds, okay. Maybe ten. <laughs> ten. Why don't we just count down? Ten, nine, eight, seven. Let's see what else in the room there. We can count. Let me see. I spy with my little eyes something blue. No. <laughs> gotcha. So I'm looking what in we your have room. Here is the test, the uh, test strip where you can read blood sugar. We have the uh, glucometer. Glucose. What is it? Glucometer. Glucometer. Sorry, she's got it. My mom is a former mad scientist. She knows how to administer these things. And crazy cat lady. And crazy cat lady. <laughs> so we have the test strips and whatnot and the pokey thing. So we're going to walk through this right quick. Go for it. Do you want to describe what you're doing? All right. First, you get a little pokey thing. Lancet. The lancet. That's right. Little pokey thing. Little pokey thing. That's right. They come and in handy. If you want to use one of these, you can put it inside. I pref prefer not to. And I practice a lot on my dog. Poor dog. Our dog's diabetic. We have she has to get two insulin shots a day and we read her blood sugar every day. Oh, my. So, first you take alcohol wipes what I, which I don't have here and you would take the alcohol wipe and you would clean your little spot that you're going to do the pokey thing on lance it but before you <coughs> do that you always get one of your test strips out so folks apparently we don't have the alcohol wipes so I'm not going to get my finger pricked tonight well we do I just, didn't just spit on it she didn't bring them in so we don't spit have them it, so it's yeah. not going to be well, just I just ate a cookie, it. so is that still not? But I drank tea, so it's it's sanitary. I just spit on it. So you have this little test strip, and um, it has like a little butterfly on the on front, and that's the front of it. I'll hold up to the camera. This is the test strip. Very well. There's, Very good. there's two little dark spots on the bottom where the test strip is slightly tapered and what you would do is you would poke this test strip into the glucometer and it reads it's been calibrated for these test strips and each one has a number on it and this has already been calibrated so they work together they understand each other they're on the same page and now it's making a little like a little drop thing and a test strip sort of going around and you've got one minute to get your blood but on just one of these little black spots 
on the tapered end. If you get it on both of them, it doesn't work. So you have that ready. You would wipe the finger, then you would poke it and get the blood. You get a nice little blob of blood. It doesn't have to be like running down, but like a, a nice little bubble of blood. And then you take the test strip and you just get it on one black dot on the end and the glucometer will beep and then you know you're done. Then you take your alcohol and you, you're holding that or your patient can hold it. Ouchie. <laughs> While this reads it and then it'll come up and tell you what your, your numbers are on the screen. Easy peasy, fresh and squeezy. Uh, Wendy has says use some whiskey. And Wendy also says, hi, Vicki. I like it when you get technical. <laughs> and uh, Maya says, hello, James's mom. It's one, yes. of the, it's one of the times she comes on where she's not dressed in a costume doing some act or something. She's coming on as a medical expert. No, I'm not an expert, but. She's been around the block. Yes. Okay. Anyway. So obviously we didn't have the alcohol wipes, so she didn't bring them in. So we're not doing the finger pricks. So at some point, audience in the future, I owe you blood. <laughs> there yes. shall be blood. Okay. Thank you much. All right. That's it. She won't wait to go to bed. She's used to watching the show from the other room. <laughs> I usually watch the show. Okay. Hi. Want to kayak with you again soon, Vicky? Yes. Good to see you yes. all. Definitely happens. So, with that, uh, we're going to go on to the, tonight's third subject. We're going to make this quick because we can because we're already at ten fifty one. So with that. Uh, we have a kitty. Apparently, my cat just wandered in. I might have to show her. Uh, let's review with our medical plan, our quack medical panel. Uh, what do you say, Doctor Quackers and Doctor Pickles? Apparently, not much. Jar, 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 We're jar, trying jar. to get the kitten out of the room, the office because she's a pain in the butt. So, with that, uh, let's check in with our next one. We have high blood pressure. This is one of the more preventable and damaging that can lead to a lot of other things, uh, problems. So high blood pressure is, or HBP, or hypertension, is when your blood pressure, the force of your blood pushing against the walls of your blood vessels is consistently too high. The primary way that high blood pressure causes harm is by increasing the workload of the heart and blood vessels, making them work harder and less efficiently. And what leads to high blood pressure? One of the things that can lead to that? High cholesterol. Over time, the force and friction of high blood pressure damages the delicate tissues inside the arteries. In turn, LDL, black, bad cholesterol, forms plaque along tiny tears in the artery walls, signifying the start of arteriosclerosis. The more the plaque and damage increases, the narrower or the smaller the insides of the arteries become, raising blood pressure and starting a vicious cycle that further harms your arteries, heart, and the rest of your body. This can untimely lead, this can ultimately lead to other conditions ranging from arrhythmia to heart attack and stroke. Stroke. Yeah, well, we know that one. Okay, blood pressure is measured in millimeters of mercury, MMHG. A blood pressure measurement has two numbers. The top number is the systolic and the bottom number. The bottom is the blood pressure flow when the heart or muscle squeezes, contracts, pumping blood. The bottom number, diastolic, is the pressure measured between the heartbeats. So we talked a little bit about that. Let me see if there's another slide to get to. Yep. Okay. That's what we're doing. So we have two numbers when we measure blood pressure. I'm going to measure my blood pressure here in just a second. I've got this right here. Um, it is... Probably the simplest and very cost efficient to monitor yourself. And if you have high blood pressure, it is a preamble to so many other conditions that lead to diabetes, heart attack, heart problems, cardiac problems, and stroke. And folks, you now need to monitor because if you ignore it, thinking it'll go away or check it out later, you might pay the price. I'm an example. So with that, uh, so we have the top number when it's measured, like, say, 120 over 80. The systolic, the top number, is the heart pumping works. So that's the pressure, 120. Ideal blood pressure is 120 over 80, 80 being the diastolic. That is between pumps, so the heart is at rest for that split second. So blood doesn't just go through the body. It goes like this, as going pump, 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 pump. That's how it moves. Pump, systolic, at rest, diastolic, moving again. 
systolic. So that's where it's measured. Now, here's a graph that shows uh, the levels right quick of blood pressure. So the categories, if you have your hyper, uh, normal is less than 120 and the diastolic has to be less than 80. Ideally, you want 120 over 80. Elevated is anything with a systolic of 120 to 129 and less than 80. High blood pressure, hypertension stage one, it's 130 to 139 or with a diastolic of 80 to 80 to 39. High blood pressure, hypertension stage two, that's bad. 140 or higher for systolic, 90 or greater for a diastolic. Hypertensive crisis, consult your doctor immediately, which means you are a ticking time bomb for a stroke is higher than 180 with a diastolic higher than 120. When I had my stroke back last July, uh, my blood pressure at the time of the stroke was 210 over 145, 140. Wow. Boom. That's insane. That's like a can you walk right now? That's crazy. Uh, I asked myself a lot of wow a lot, but uh, not that much. I don't dwell on things. It just happened. But remember, that was from a tooth infection that spiked uh, that spiked my blood pressure. Been spiking yeah. for probably a couple weeks. A lot of things can spike it. Stress can spike it. It was particularly spiking, amount of stress, but that drinking. tooth infection was a combination. But that tooth infection put me over the top. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's signs, there's signs you can kind of tell, like, um, let me see if that listed right quick. Um, there's some signs you can tell for, uh, high blood pressure. One, I can feel it. A lot of people aren't self-aware like I am, but you can, I can feel it too. Yeah. Blood, uh, you know, the feeling bags mm -hmm. under eyes. Um, another would be, let's say you're wearing like, say tight pair of gloves or something, or you're doing like this and my, your skin doesn't come back. It stays unpliable. Like if you pinch your cheek and I mean, like the pinch is there, it doesn't come back, that's high blood pressure. That's one sign of it. One, mm -hmm. one little known sign is like, say, a crink in the ear. If you've got a fold in your earlobe, that's a sign of problems with uh, circulation. That's also another sign of probable high blood pressure. Um, and hydration. <laughs> when's the next fry bread drop from Wendy? Wendy, we're working on it. Uh, another one is we have a viewer that shared their blood pressure. I'm not going to put that up there. I'm going to keep that medical information private, even though they decided to post it. But yeah, that is uh, the 165 over 85. If we look at our chart, matter of fact, let's bring back the chart. Since one of our viewers just gave us what their blood pressure is. If we take for what their blood pressure is, 165 over 85, what's that tell us? Uh, 165. 140 or higher is high blood pressure with a diastolic of 90 or higher. So right now your diastolic's fairly low. So um, you are borderline from judging from this graph, borderline uh, stage one to stage two hypertensive. And I don't know. I just farted. I don't know if it came over the mic. Hopefully not. You are mumbling. Yes. <laughs> we we're talking about smart asses earlier. So that's what you'd have based on that graph right there. You are somewhere in between that. Get checked out. Do what you can. Uh, you might have to take high blood pressure medication. I was on this kind of pill for, for uh, many years. Yeah, for I'm high blood low pressure. And I'm hoping to get off. I'm on low dose I'm low dopine. I should be off it. I haven't Probably been on it for in about a week. It's been about five years now. But since I lost uh, 55 pounds, that completely shot me out of the high blood pressure thing. And I don't. I don't even worry about it anymore right now. And anybody that's actually suffered a heart attack or stroke, mainly stroke, they also have to take low, low dose uh, aspirin, baby aspirin, basically 85 milligram doses. Mm -hmm. And that's act as a natural blood thinner because the acetaminophen in it. Mm -hmm. And um, you, the problem is with that, that, that the acetaminophen can damage the heart, the uh, liver long term. Liver and your kidneys. Uh, liver and your kidneys. White so, willow block too. White willow yeah. bark. It's also an asp is I uh, got the same thing that asp I, I do willow bark treatments um, to do that. So the thing is, is, you know, if you, you have a bad, if it's really bad, they'll put you on blood thinners. You don't want, want to be on mm -hmm. so the, best, the best medicine is preventative. Know your health now. So you don't pay the price later on and go what I've been going through. And our audience that watches the show long term has seen the little bit of hell I've gone through since July. Yeah, you learn a lot, don't you? 
Yeah, well, it, it I knew you would dive right into it too. Yeah, well, and yeah, here, here I am changing yeah, up my medical career. All right, let's show how to take blood pressure, folks. If you've never seen this before, or you've seen other people do it, I'm going to do it right now. What's up? Just putting my arm out. I'm ready. Yep. So this is super simple. I actually took a blood pressure cup with me on my Green River trip only two a month and a half after the stroke. And I was taking it every day, logging it. It's that it portable. Up. It's that easy. Right now we have a tabletop unit right here. That's uh, a lot of people use. It's even in some offices. And all you have to do, put on the blood pressure cuff. Typically you want to sit in a, sit in a nice uh, relaxed position. Feet back. on the ground. I've not been doing that. You want to sit back for about three to five minutes. Legs on. So you have what's called the resting blood pressure, and just stick this on, or you can have a friend do it. You put on the blood pressure cuff. What's the cuff called? Uh, this one's a uh, um, Omron. You can get oh, this. Oh, I for thought like, that was that long word you were. I can't. Oh say. no, no, we're going to talk about that next. We're going to show that one. The stigma, <laughs> stigma, and <laughs> that. Okay, so all you got to do is just put this on. Stick it right there. There will often be little marks on where you do it because you want to line up this part, which actually should go down. Line it up with the brachial vein, but basically those little marks on the cuff that you do, you put it on. You press start right here on the unit. Make sure that the blood pressure cuff is fairly firm, but you want to stick two fingers under it. Now it's starting to pump. You can probably hear a little pump going. I'm resting my arm. So it's a resting position about heart level. I actually have it too low right now. And it's pumping. You're not really supposed to talk much when you're doing it. You're not supposed to talk either. So my blood pressure is going to actually be way off what I'm doing, but I'm giving the example. So it's giving everything right now. And it's giving the diastolic. It's just rather the systolic right now. It's also going to read your uh, pulse rate. Mm -hmm. uh, pulse rate can correlate with high blood pressure. It's surprising that a lower pulse rate happens with with high blood pressure. It's interesting how that works. So currently my pulse in a normal pulse beats per minute for your heart for a person is 60 to 100 beats per minute. Uh, anything over that you want to check it out. But currently my pulse, my rate is 88 beats per minute. Wow. With a blood pressure of about 121 over 88. No, it's not too bad. A little high, a little high. I've been working a little on high, but not not like yeah. So strange. remember that that number, the systolic, is the high number. That's the heart. That's the beating pace, and then the diastolic is the resting pace. So, um, that's actually really good. And I'm it's actually probably lower than that because I'm not at a resting position. I'm moving around and I'm talking. But that's how you do it. So, folks, it's that easy. You can take your blood pressure at a free thing at like a pharmacy at a Walgreens. Yeah. CVS or Walmart or whatever. You can buy one of these own units for, I bought a good unit for portable for like 25 bucks off Amazon. This is one of the most preventable and easy things to follow and super convenient where you don't have to cut your, you know, get blood off your finger to do these tests. And uh, super convenient, one of the most preventable forms that you can take through diet and other actions so you don't end up going through what you've watched me go through the last six and a half months. And I have that, had good, good blood pressure for the last four years, four or five years. My blood pressure has been normal. Yeah, you're amazing. Since with I what changed, you accomplished on that. Since I changed my diet. Aside, let me get. Actually, press the mute button. Let me move the table off the side, folks. We're going to figure out what is, and I'm going to tell you what is a stigmometer. That was a the correct pronunciation. I've got one right here. Stig We're going to show you what it is. Okay. Sure. Let me stick away the glucometer glu here. You know, that, that would be bad. Okay. Dig manometer. <laughs> Makes me want to watch the Muppet Show again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not run over my textbooks right here because it's a lot of money. Even used. Uh, the side. Okay, folks. As promised, what is a stigma manometer? For one, let's look how it is spelled. 
Stig. Nah, I'm not. It is pronounced. Stig. Stigmomanometer. Manometer. It is pronounced. Stigmomanometer. 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 Sounds like a Jeopardy answer. Stigmomanometer. I finally got it. This is a real thing. Now, I don't know if you could, we don't have a way for you to tell us that you know how to do it. Though a lot of you are probably going, how do you say it, Kelly Joe? Stigmomanometer. 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 Once you got it, got it. Make a song. So some of you may be saying it. Remember, I'm a stutter also. Stignom, and you're going to want to do like an N. Stignomenomena. Stignomenometer. Okay. So here's what it is. I've got one right here in my bag. I have to use this for class. It is a fancy name for a manual blood pressure cuff. Cuff. Now I know why they call it cuff. Yes, this is the manual <laughs> one I have to use in classes. This thing cost me like 17 bucks at a Walgreens. It's actually not a bad unit. It's not super Stigma. high end, but it does the job. I bought one at the student bookstore, a Sigmomanometer. And I think it was broken. The hand pump wouldn't work. So I went over it. What I do, I go to a Walgreens, spend 17 bucks instead of the 45 the school charged. Totally works. But this is it. Uh, you got the little gauge. Matter of fact, quickly, let's show how it works. We're six minutes over, but folks, this is worth it tonight. You stick the blood pressure cuff on your arm, just like I did with the uh, one right there a couple minutes ago. Yeah, let's seal this up right here. And this is what ambulances use. We... <laughs> it's got to be on the arm because it's pumping right now. You know what? We'll just go like this. If I don't have it on my arm, I'll mess it up. You have the little pumpy thing. You take it up to like 180. <laughs> And then you slowly let this name. air out on the pump, and it slowly goes down. And what you do while it goes down, what you read is you actually stick a stethoscope. We're going to go ahead and take it all the way down. While you're looking at that, you take a stethoscope. I've got one right here. Look, I'm a medical person now. Uh, what do you think, Kelly Joe? That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, so you, you swear the stethoscope, and God, this thing's twisting. And you stick it on the brachial, next to the brachial artery on the forearm, right here. And you have it just on the blood pressure cuff. And while it's going down, you start to hear, when you start to hear a heartbeat, as it's going down, you mark it right there. You remember where it's at on the stigmomanometer, stigmomanometer. Stigmomanometer. And, and that's your dias, that, that's your systolic. And then when you get done hearing the heartbeat through the stethoscope, that bottom number is going to be your diastolic. And that is how you manually take blood pressure. Using a signometer and a and a and a little meter thing, a thingy. That's what you yeah, called it. This is actually the meter <laughs> thing. Actually, itself right here. This is the sphygmometer. Not a sphinct. Not a sphincternometer. Not a monomenomenometer. Which is a whole nother subject. <laughs> yeah, it's not the sphincternometer. That would be know your health number now. three, part three. This actual gauge is actually called the. Stigmomanometer. God, I'm probably not some some viewers probably going, don't do a it again. Don't say it again. Don't say it again. Alone. Yeah. So anyway, that's folks, is what it is. You can now win a bar bet. Tell your friends, hey, <laughs> let's do blood pressure. I know about medical stuff. You want to know? <laughs> I know it's stigmomanometer. Stigmomanometer. <laughs> stigmomanometer. <laughs> stigmomanometer. <laughs> a stigmomanometer. If you know what sphincter is, folks, that's basically the butt. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. That is the Part show three. tonight, folks. We have talked a lot tonight. We're ten minutes over. Totally worth it. Uh, we've covered a lot of good stuff. Um, we got some stuff right in here. Uh, <laughs> some comments we definitely need to get over here from from Vivian. Yell into it. You want to yell into it? Oh, the stethoscope. This is the earpiece. There's actually yeah. names for these parts, but I'll tell you, like, this is called the diaphragm, and that's called the bell. That's designed for pediatric. <laughs> hey, James. It's got to go in my ears first. And you're hey, gonna, James. You're, what? You're going to give yourself overload sensory. It was almost over. 
Well, apparently not because I'm not. I can barely tolerate the sound of my own voice. <laughs> I have that right. whole thing too. I hate hate loud. Uh, we have a viewer that's watching on YouTube that says sphinctometer. A what? Yeah, yeah. Sphinctometer. That's that's know your health part three. <laughs> yeah. But what do you? I, I don't know what. But what do you one. think? No, it's actually what's. But what do you? But, but what do you think? It's. Um, but we might have to do that later. Yeah. <laughs> when I don't I'm know not what else we can but analogies on this one. Bring so the uh, back for that one. She's out loving it. Uh Viv Maya says it's the old school way to take your blood pressure. Yes, it is. When I used to work in ambulance back 25, 30 years ago, that's what we used. We didn't have the modern machines that makes it so much easier, especially if you're kayaking. Mine was All a right. CNA forever ago. That's what we used then too. Just remember, yeah. Just remember, folks. Not a sphinctometer, a stigmamanometer. Stigmamanometer. I out this morning. Stigmamanometer. Minamanamana. <laughs> With that, okay. I think it's about time to close the show tonight. Uh, this has been Knowing Your Health Part Two. This has been fun. God, good. Kelly, do you like the perfect guest for this? Yeah, I don't. I just smile and nod. <laughs> no, you added. You added the holistic parts to this part, <laughs> folks. Uh, we could go on and on about the diet part and all this, but please, please take this information you learned tonight, rewatch the show, share it with a friend, do your research, look at places like Mayo Clinic, James uh, John Hopkins University. Uh, some of the sources are what you hear what Kelly Joe has said aren't there to look up information for eating. Rose Don't Mountain go to some two by twice health site. Look at something accredited. No snake oil. No snake oil. <laughs> We'll save that for another show. Okay. Yes. And uh, matter of fact, uh, should we check in with our doctors one more time? Sure. Just see if they're still checking facts. Uh, no, because the picture popped off the screen. But we would like to thank uh, our medical panel that has been advisory for this, Dr. Quackers and Dr. Pickles. The PowerPoint <laughs> actually ended, so we'll just go with it right there. So there are lots of fun. Dr. Pickles is sitting right here on a shelf by my computer right now. They'll be back in some other capacities, probably show producers or I don't know, lounge singers, ballet dancers, but Mr. Quackers and Jar Jar Pickles. With that, this has been this week's episode of Late Night Craft Talk. Kelly Joe, damn love it when you're on. Well, Sabay will be back next week. And right now, tentatively, I'll say we'll be bringing you back the fun show, Barbie versus G.I. Joe. We'll that yeah. So that's, that's one of the fun ones. We do a serious show. We like to come up with something ridiculous to balance out everything. But folks, thank you for watching. Get yourself checked out. Check out the free clinic. Take care of each other. Take care of yourself. Feel the love. Y'all awesome. Kelly Joe, thank you for coming on. Any last words from you? Good night. Farewell. Live long and prosper. Got it. Totally. Okay. Now I got to find the closing credits because <laughs> I didn't pre up on that in the show right quick. Uh, okay. Here it is, folks. We'll see you next week. See ya. Do the next. Do the next. Oh, ain't he cute? He is cute. Good night, folks. Good night.